my name is Luke Jones, and welcome to a very special series of videos that I'm going to be cr creating for Brought to the Table here, where I get to bring some of my favorite games to your table. This whole series is going to be dedicated to just talking about some of my absolute favorite games and getting you excited about them and why I enjoy them so very much. I'm going to give you a quick little brief overview of kind of how the game is played, not teaching you the rules, but the whole goal here is just to really get you excited about why these different mechanics in these games, as well as the art, the boxes, and all that stuff, just gets me so excited to play these games. So we're going to start off this series by showing off probably a game that you're all very familiar with on this channel, um, that why it's so special and dear to my heart. Let's go ahead and talk about Disney Villainous from Ravensburger. So Disney Villainous here is a two to six player game in which you as the player get to take control of a Disney villain from a wide array of different Disney films, such as, you know, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, Lion King, uh, Aladdin, you know, Little Mermaid, etc. The list can go on. There are tons of different villains that you can play as in this game. I'm just holding up the core main box right here, but there are a ton of standalone boxes that come with other unique villains as well. The goal of the game is to essentially complete your own unique individual task, which is something that you don't see in a lot of games. This is called an asymmetrical style game where each individual player is going to be doing some kind of universal mechanics that everyone kind of shares, but everyone's win objective is actually very different. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of show off a little bit of the game here, kind of talk about why I think this game is fantastic, and then we'll jump into some other little key features that I want to talk about and why this game is fantastic. All right, so over here, I actually have an example kind of layout of what a player's playing area is going to be like while they're playing Disney Villainous right here. For this particular example, I've actually chosen one of my absolute favorite Disney villain characters, Scar, right here to show off the example because I want to show you something that excites me as I'm kind of demonstrating off how this game works. So in this game, you're going to be completing your own individual objective. And the way that you're going to be doing this is by basically managing different cards in your hand as well as cards that are going to be existing on your own personal board. Each player is going to have their own individual player board right here that actually folds out similar to like what a storybook is like. You start off with the board like this, and then you open it up to reveal basically the world that belongs to this film. So in this example right here with Scar, we're going to have different locations that kind of relate to the original um, Lion King movie. Now I've already kind of put some cards out here just for example purposes, but I'll be talking more about kind of how this game plays. So first, what happens is players are going to have this unique mover that is actually sculpted to be some type of representat representation of that villain. So right here, we have Scar that's kind of got the different little elephant graveyard skulls underneath him that kind of also represent a little bit of fire as well. I really like how this figure is set up. Each individual villain actually has a different mover, um, which adds a, a lot of flair and theme to this game, which we'll get into. And so on your turn, each player is going to be taking their mover and moving to a particular location and taking unique actions there. Those unique actions, you know, represent a bunch of different things, such as playing cards, gaining power, which is used to um, play cards, as well as different other actions, such as moving cards around that exist in your, in your uh, realm, as well as vanquishing different heroes that are going to come out onto the board. Because heroes, like they should be towards any villain, are pesky, they do bad things, we don't want them to exist. So we need to take care of them. And the way that you vanquish these heroes is by playing allies out uh, that have strength that is greater than or equal to the particular hero that is here. And then you just vanquish them. They go away. You discard your allies and all that stuff. This game is a lot about card management. You're going to be taking cards from your hand and using them to basically manage your, your realm right here to try to accomplish your unique goal. All these different villains have very similar actions that they do, whether it's playing cards, gaining power, discarding cards from hand to open up for new cards that they get to play, as well as moving cards around, such as your allies and possible items that you may see. That's essentially all this game is, is card management. But what makes this game very unique compared to other tabletop games is that there's no true interaction. So if I brought out a different villain, none of the cards specifically that are in Scar's deck from his hero deck, which we'll get to, and his villain deck, 
actually interact with other particular villains. This is all in your own space. So you as the player only really have to focus on what you, you are doing in your own space. Now there is one way that you particularly interact with your other players, which is called the fate action, which is represented by this little cloud lightning bolt on your board. So that's one of the actions you could take on your turn. The one way you do get to interact with your opponent is by taking a fate action. And what you'll do is you'll draw two cards from the top of their unique fate deck and then get to play one of those cards. They'll usually be different, you know, rep representations of like songs or ideas from the movie. But mainly you'll be seeing different heroes that represent the movie um, from the movies. So right here we have Timon. I have Mufasa here. Um, he's played there for Scar particular reasons. And all sorts of other heroes and items from those movies. So you get to see all this wonderful artwork that represents these characters, which is actually all hand-drawn. These are not stills from the movie. It is pretty dope. So that is essentially how this game works. Each individual villain has their own unique goal, which is listed right underneath their main portrait in their board right here, as well as they come with the, um, this nice little villain guide right here that actually kind of walks you through some of the main strategies, what the kind of the goal in revolves around, and how to use particular cards in different ways. It's a nice way too, since all the villains do have unique cards that are in their both their fate deck and their own villain deck, you might want to know, understand what these cards do and how they interact towards your goal. So the guy does a pretty good job of showing that off as well. And the nice thing too is, I'm only showing this off for one particular villain. All these different characteristics of the cards, the guide, the art, etc. is shared amongst all the different 15 villains that exist currently for Disney Villainous. It's pretty awesome. And, this is, and like I said, the best thing about this game is that from a teaching standpoint, all these cards only interact with this particular board right here. They do not interact directly with any of the other characters. So, from learning, when a player is learning this for the first time, guess what? They're only going to have to worry about their particular board. They'll only want to try to take these fate actions when they see that their opponent is getting closer and closer to their goal. So then they're actually, they might be like, oh, I want to go screw up my friend and see what I can do to mess up their, their plans and such. So, it's nice. It helps teach so that way the player only has to focus on what they are doing. What's also nice too is that while this game is kind of targeted towards more of a beginner audience, those who are getting introduced to tabletop games, this game has plenty of strategy and depth for these characters to really kind of expand upon them and really if you are a big fan of the heavier like strategy of trading card games or collectible card games or even just heavier games in general this game still has plenty for you as an advanced tabletop game player right here there are strategies that are definitely not talked about in these villain guides that you can easily discover by just kind of looking around and seeing the opportunities of these cards um, there's all sorts of cool little combos that you can do and all you have to do is just kind of look through the different cards in your unique villain deck and see what they can do in different situations. And that's one of the last things I definitely want to talk about right here in terms of just the gen general gameplay here. So this game is fantastic because it always constantly is teaching you something every time you play. If you actually take a look at the back of the box, and this is not the, the box um, for Scar here, but the back of the box is usually talk about Hey, once you've mastered a villain, go try out another villain and try to learn how they work. And the thing is, mastery doesn't come through winning with the villain or, you know, finally or finally getting all those different strategies and you kind of figure stuff out. You're going to be constantly learning how to play this game, being more efficient with your character. And that's really kind of the level that's really nice for the long-standing tabletop gamers is the fact that, guess what? Even after I've won with Scar or I've won with this particular villain, I can still try to play with them again and find more efficient strategies to play with this particular character. So it's super awesome. I really enjoy how much replayability and how much teaching this game does from the get-go to really encourage players to, continuous to continuously replay. And that's the thing too. Obviously, guess what? You're going to be learning how to play against different villains as well as playing your own villain. So it'll be nice. It's a really good way to really find all those cool strategies and ways to counter your opponents and what they're currently doing. You're always learning in this game, and that's one of the huge standouts that I love. Now, one of the things I do want to take a moment to talk about here is talk about some of the art that exists in this game. I already mentioned this a little bit in terms of the gameplay overview here, but like I said, all this art that exists within this game is actually hand-drawn art. While these are stills from the movies that they're referenced from, 
This is not necessarily just the actual still from the movie. This is actually redrawn artwork from that particular movie, which makes it absolutely fantastic. Um, so it just makes it such a wonderful time to look at these cards while you're playing with them. And as you're, especially if you haven't seen these movies in a long time, you're going to actually notice like, oh, I remember this scene where this takes place. Or, oh, I remember what this looked like, and, and etc. Same goes with the locations, as well as all the individual art from all these different cards. You're going to have those moments of, oh, wow, I remember that scene. Especially, I have to shout out, as a Scar fan, I love this Be Prepared artwork. It just really screams that moment from the movie. And as you play the game, you'll actually like feel like this card is a great representation of that song while it's playing and with all the different colors and such. It's great. I also have to give a huge shout out to how the game is actually designed from a learning perspective and teaching perspective. First off, the rule book itself is very well done and put together. Um, for each individual game box that you can get, um, it actually goes over all the individual components for that particular box and what should be in the game and actually what each of the individual actions should do and a quick representation of that particular action, um, which is absolutely fantastic. It also has a quick, nice card uh, diagram showing off different card types for each of the individual sets. So you'll actually see cards represented from characters from that set. So if you want to go pull out that card and see it, it's a pretty good way to understand like what is being talked about um, in the rule book itself, which is pretty dandy. Um, on top of that too, I was also want to give a shout out to how these guides are actually put together. These guys are super great for when you're handing this off to a player. You essentially, they're going to be like, I want to play Scar. You can then just hand off the guide, and then they can just quickly just look over it. It talks about specifically that particular objective, how that objective is supposed to be obtained, maybe some different notes or different unique setup that you have to do with that particular villain, as well as a lot of the key cards to really help the, the player kind of understand what to do from the get-go so they're not lost. Because that is one thing that this game is, since it is asymmetrical, Everyone's goal is the same, to complete their objective first, but each individual objective is different. And the way that you have to go about accomplishing that objective is very different. So with these guides, they do a very good job of walking you through, you know, how to basically accomplish that, some cards to look out for, etc. And even a little bit more hints as well. And also some clarifications, which is really, really nice. Also, i got to give a huge shout out to the graphic design on these cards. So not just talking about specifically the art, but the actual graphic design of each of these individual cards right here. Um, I know the camera can't really do a great job of showing this off because, come on, focus, man. You can do it. I believe in you, Mufasa. I think I got it. But great job of showing off the title, showing off the text. I really like how the fact that the subtitles for the individual cards are listed at the bottom so you know what type of card it is. Um, it's also cool because the border around here actually has unique corners depending on the villain. So with here with Scar, he's got this unique little antlers to show off the different um, members of the Stampede that happen in the Lion King. To show off some other things as well, I'm going to pull out some cards from Corella because Corella is also one of my favorite characters to play in this game. Corella specifically actually has these puppy paws on the borders of her card as well. Um, Super great. And as you can tell, the art is very consistent in terms of how wonderful it is. There's not really any cards in this game that have any bad art whatsoever. They are all fantastic. Um, they all do a really good job of showing off and representing these movies in a fantastic way. Um, but yes, the layout of these cards is very clean and simple to understand and kind of know what they're supposed to be doing um, and what how you can reference them and such. I really like how the font's very clean and simple, but also is kind of thematic with this whole kind of like overarching Disney villains theme. It's very well done. And I also have to give a really big shout out to the fact that so the main currency in the game is called power, which are these little tokens right here um, that you use to basically spend and play your cars and possibly some other different abilities that you might find along the way. And not only are they just like very well, like, you know, they're a circle, they got this kind of cool design on them, but the fact that they're named power, I think is also great too. The fact that you're actually spending power to basically become more powerful as you're playing the game and the more power that you have, obviously the more things that you can do, you know, I really like that concept of the game. Um, so overall, the way that the game is laid out in terms of, you know, it's iconography, it's art, the rules and, and etc. is very well put together. And I also have to give a huge shout out. One of the biggest things when it comes to the aesthetic of the game is the movers themselves. I am just showing off Scar right here, but I'm going to pull out another one of my other favorite movers right here, which is Corella's. 
Um, each one of these movers is essentially just a representation of that character. And while this is, you know, this is not needed, you could have just done a simple pawn that is basically the color representation of that character's board. You know, they want the extra step to design these movers and make it look like you're that character while you're playing them out. It adds more theme, and that's honestly the biggest charm of this game is the fact that there is a ton of theme in everything that you do. You know, a large thing that when you talk to any tabletop game designers is that usually theme is put on top of how the game was put together. Because you never really should design a game directly around theme. But Disney Villainous is one of the exceptions where theme is actually ingrained into how the game is put together. You know, each one of these cards, based off the text, based off the strength values, the cost, and everything, from all the allies to the heroes themselves to the effects, all just feel so thematic with all these characters. There's not one single unthematic card in any of these decks. I talked about Be Prepared earlier and how much I love this card. But there are so many different cards and how they work and how thematic that they are with their particular movies. And I also have to give a huge shout out to the fact that there's a particular type of card called Conditions. Um, where essentially you can play these on other players' turns when they do something. And all these conditions are actually kind of built around some type of like trait the particular villain has. So this is pride. Obviously, if you know Be Prepared, there's that my words are a matter of pride line. Um, I really like how these kind of cards are put together because they're really kind of based off these traits of from these villains to kind of give them even more thematic flair. It's really well done on how theme is implemented into the gameplay, whether it's basically the title of a card or, um, you know, and what you're referencing from. Another great example is Stick With Me right here. Uh, obviously, from the song as well, um, Stick With Me and You'll Never Go Hungry Again. Just simple things like the title and how the cards interact with your particular board is an absolutely fantastic time. So if you're a big fan of Disney, you will absolutely adore this game. You don't even necessarily have to get into the super complex, super in-depth strategy portion of the game, but just simply playing as these characters and when you're doing particular things just feels incredibly, incredibly good with how all this game is put together. So this last portion of the video, I want to do this with all these videos, is kind of talking about, you know, purchasing, purchasing the game as well as kind of figuring out if this game is going to be right for you. So obviously I showed off the game, it's art, kind of a little bit of how the game plays, kind of give you a feel of the type of experience that you're going to be having when playing this particular game. With uh, Disney Villain, is one of the first things I definitely want to shout out for how Ravensburger tackled purchasing this is that if you are kind of on the edge and you don't necessarily want to buy the core box, which is uh, $35, basically U.S. standard money, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a financial person, so I don't know the correct words to use with that. But um, if you don't want to spend all the money on this one and any of the villains in this particular box are of interest to you, you don't have to buy this box. You could, in theory, just buy one of the smaller standalone expansions, which run for about 25 um, was it US dollars right here, and get those villains that are of interest of you. I know there's probably a lot of folks that if they want to get this core box right here, they might be like, hey, none of these villains interest me. My favorite scar is not in this box. So, you know, from the get-go, I might not have been interested in actually purchasing this game until that one came out. So I might only want to buy the one that comes with Scar. So you have some really pretty awesome options to and what you can purchase because the biggest thing is, unlike some other games where you can kind of expand upon them with expansions, uh, this one you don't need to buy the core box for it. It comes with everything that you need with power tokens and all the different pieces for those particular villains. You don't have to buy the core box with this if you only want to use certain villains from a particular box. And that also goes with when you're trying to expand your game as well, if you don't want to actually purchase everything, you only, can, you only have to pick and choose. What is nice about it, though, is that if you just want to buy one of these simpler boxes to kind of see if it's, it's your cup of tea, it's a pretty cheap price point. And then if you want to get everything, then you can kind of go ahead and go all in and try to get everything, um, So, which is pretty awesome. Now, in terms of the type of gamer this game is for, I would suggest, first off, if you have any Disney fans in your family, I strongly recommend getting this game. I have talked to quite a few people who have been introduced to tabletop games through Disney Villainous, and they very much enjoyed their experience with it because obviously the first time that you get into the game, you are just re-experiencing the movie. You're doing a retelling of the movie, of whatever that movie you decide to choose, whether it's Peter Pan, The Lion King, you know, Little Mermaid, etc. You are just basically recreating that story 
using the different cards and interacting with the different heroes and the different villains and et cetera that exist within that world, which is pretty awesome. So you don't even have to get super strategically in depth with this particular game to have a good time. You're gonna see awesome cards that do all sorts of cool different things. I know one of my good friends likes to play a lot of Captain Hook. And as someone who's just recently actually saw Peter Pan for the first time over a year ago, it's actually pretty cool to see how all the different cards are pretty thematic without doing anything super crazy, you know, textual wise or how the game is played just to kind of get the point across with Captain Hook. It's pretty cool. So if you are just new, if you're new to tabletop games, this is a great experience. If you're experienced with this game, or tabletop games in general. I strongly recommend that you still pick this game up. Really what at its core, what Disney Villainous was kind of built around was trying to re-implement that one versus one, you know, trading card game or collectible card game type of atmosphere where you are going up against your opponent with a unique deck. This actually takes a lot from Legend of the Five Rings, a little bit in terms of the fact that with Legend of the Five Rings, each player basically comes with two unique decks. And this one right here kind of has that same aspect because each villain comes with their unique villain deck and their own unique fate deck that's supposed to basically hurt them when players take the fate action to target them. So there is this kind of this cool, like, when you look at the surface and you know a lot about different tabletop games, there's lots of different little um, things that they kind of borrow here and there to make it a little bit more in-depth. Um, there are certain characters that when you play as them, Pete is a perfect example. If you played lots of Match of the Gathering, any type of different um, trading card game or collectible card games, or deck builders, mind you, Pete has a lot of uni unique little gimmicky mechanics that really kind of emphasize those types of play styles. So if you're super into the more strategic side of tabletop gaming, this is still great. At the surface, you're going to be learning, you know, just the basic stuff. But as you play the villains more, you're going to start to learn a lot of cool, unique little tricks with these characters. That is definitely going to allow you to be playing this game over long periods of time. I've been playing this game for over a year, basically on a weekly consistent basis. So, and obviously if you've been a part of this channel, you know that for sure. Um, so there's tons of stuff that you can do with these different villains. Um, so that way it's not just a one and done ordeal. So it makes it the replayability factor of this game skyrocket. So putting the money down into buying one of these is worth it. So I strongly recommend it. Now, if you're on the fence of purchasing the game, this game, because you've heard, you know, one thing or the other, you know, what I would strongly recommend you do is either go find a friend who has a copy of it or just buy one of the smaller expansion boxes and just give it a go. Um, this game does play up to six players. Uh, I actually personally do not recommend doing that, especially when you're first learning the game. I think the sweet spot for this game is between two to four players to have a very good fun experience. Um, but I would strongly suggest if you are on the fence, just go buy one of these boxes, maybe play up to three players with, you know, trying out the different stuff and you should have a great time. I actually picking up this box in particular because if you are at all interested, I would strongly suggest this is the first like small standalone box that you purchase, whether it's you've already bought the core box or you just want to try the game out without a little bit of a lesser uh, cost, you know, entry. This is a great way to do it. All three of the villains that are introduced in this box are really good to kind of learn some different, you know, complexities of the game. So uh, Wicked to the Core, a strong recommendation. It's only $25. But if you do want to experience the full learning portion of the game and kind of get a really good introduction to how the game works. Definitely, this is the best box to go of all the villains in here are pretty straightforward on how they're supposed to work. And actually, it walks you through all the different mechanics that the game can offer you. So definitely would still strongly recommend to get that core box right there because it does kind of teach you everything that the game does have. Once you've at least gotten both of these though, you know, if you aren't sold already, um, go ahead and get the rest of it. You're going to want to have everything. Even if not every single one of these villains is your cup of tea, when you have folks over that are going to play the game with you, they might see a character that's interesting them or they saw that movie and they want to play with that character. So absolutely, go ahead and get everything. This game is a ton of fun to enjoy. You get to actually discover different Disney movies that you may or may not have seen. Uh, one of the villains in here, Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective, is a villain that I've never heard of until I played the game. Then I got to watch the movie. So it's also kind of a fun way to actually experience these different movies that you may have never seen before, especially if you grew up with a lot of 90s Disney specifically, which is a lot of where um, a lot of the core villains come from, although they got a lot of the old school villains in there as well, like Queen of Hearts and Maleficent and Cruella de Vil, et cetera. So there's going to be something in here for everybody. So don't worry. If you're going to get everything, 
you won't be disappointed. So there you have it, folks. Disney Villain, this is something I have brought to your table today. If you are absolutely at all excited, go support Ravensburger and go buy this. You can purchase this on Amazon or at your Target, your Walmarts, all those, all that stuff, as well as your local friendly neighborhood game store. So go give them a purchase if you're absolutely at all interested in this game. I strongly recommend it. And I hope that this video has done you well. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, and safe. And as always on this channel, stay delightfully wicked. I hope this uh, video helps you determine whether or not Disney Bonus was right for you. Until the next time that we do one of these brought-to-the-table game-style videos, I hope you have a wonderful day.